Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the content patch for the 30th of July 2013. My name is Total Biscuit with today's gaming news and comment. Coming up in the show, Saints Row 4 refused classification for a second time. Australian IT inquiry concludes that high games prices are unjustifiable. And we'll be taking a look at the upcoming releases for this week. All this in the OC Remix track of the day is coming your way right about now. Saints Row 4 was refused classification in Australia, as you probably recall from June. The classification board specifically pointed out instances of implied sexual violence not justified by context and elements of illicit and prescribed drug use related to incentives or rewards. These are two of the only things which prevent a game from being classified under the new R18 Plus rules in Australia, and as it turns out, the classification review board of the Australian government again confirmed today that the game would be refused classification. Classification. This time around, however, it was not on the basis of implied sexual violence without context. It appears to have been based solely on drug use related to incentives and rewards. This is something which is not permitted. So based on this ruling, which is by the Classification Review Board and the statement that was put out by the Australian government, it seems like the concerns about implied sexual violence without context may have now been dismissed which is interesting. This is something that I argued should have happened in the first place because I believe there most assuredly is context to that so-called implied sexual violence. The context being that the world is ridiculous and that nobody really believes that an alien anal probe is actually a legitimate weapon. That's the context. It's completely absurd. Not to mention, of course, that there are several other games which include such weapons which were allowed to be sold over in Australia, including, of course, Destroy All Humans. Whatever the case, it seems like the drug use is now a problem. All right. Well, that's, I think, going to be a little bit more difficult to remove, isn't it? I would imagine there are probably several missions involving drugs. The specific description says drug use related to incentives and rewards. So there may also be power-ups in the game that are apparently drug-related. That could be difficult to remove, although I am not 100% sure that that's the case. They may be able to switch the context around and actually get it through. But this is still ridiculous, let's be frank. And also it really points out some very hefty double standards that annoy me greatly. Would you like to know what the rating for Limitless was? A movie that of course was released in Australia and worldwide, whereby a failing writer is able to gain monumental success through the abuse of an experimental drug. That was rated 12 plus. And for the next 20 seconds, I'm going to be spoiling the movie, so do tune out if you haven't seen Limitless yet. Just mute this for a second. That movie does not, in fact, show the negative consequences of drug abuse. In fact, everything turns out absolutely fine at the end. He's able to master the drug and gain control over pretty much everything he wants. <laughs> it turns out there were no negative consequences to it whatsoever. Yet yeah, that movie was released in that context and there are so many movies that have drug abuse and things like that involved in it the distinction appears to be that this is an interactive medium and it seems to be based on rather bizarre unproven beliefs that the interactive nature of the medium means that if you suggest that drug use in the game gives you benefits then it will imply in the player's mind that drug use is a good thing because you gain benefits from it but frankly there's no proof of that whatsoever i think that should be blindingly obvious you could also of course then throw the argument at them well what about the violence and then they're going to turn around and their counter argument is going to be well the violence is unrealistic so we don't believe it's going to cause that whereas drug use and encouraging drug use is more insidious blah 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 blah, blah. yeah but then again you look at the context of it and say hmm is Saints Row 4 really encouraging drug use? Last I checked, it was a game about the president fighting aliens. <laughs> Pretty sure it's got nothing to do with encouraging drug use and there's nothing insidious about it whatsoever. Yeah, and that's the real problem, isn't it? It's not like studies haven't been done in this particular field. I know a lot of so-called moderates like to say, yeah, well, you know, we're, we're open to the idea of more studies. Could we not be open to the idea of more studies? Could we not say, yeah, well, it's possible that games cause harm? Like, up to this point, there has been no proof of that whatsoever. Study after study after study has been done into this particular argument. And quite frankly, I'm sick of being on the defensive. I really, really am. I imagine an awful lot of gamers are rather tired of it as well, having to justify their choice of hobby to various people that have these outdated beliefs about it, having to explain away all this stuff. Like, we shouldn't have to do that. I think it's gotten to the point 
where gaming is ubiquitous enough to not be constantly accused of being the bane of society. There is no proof whatsoever that the interactive nature of games means that they're capable of influencing the viewer more than a television show, a book, or a movie. That's just not a thing. You know what really gets me? And this is almost straying off topic, but you know what really gets me? Why is it that visual mediums are policed more heavily than non-visual mediums? Why is that exactly? Is, is a graphic depiction of violence or some kind of illegal activity somehow more powerful than a written piece? Because I don't necessarily think that it is. The thing about written pieces is that they are heavily descriptive and also require a, a little bit of a use of your imagination. You fill in the blanks with your mind. If anything was harmful, wouldn't that be more harmful? It seems like it would be, rather than simply displaying it in a comic form on the screen. I think the way that Saints Row displays violence or drug use or implied sexual assault or whatever the hell you want to call anal probing, quite frankly, that is so absurd and very clearly says, this is a fantasy, it shouldn't be taken seriously, that it couldn't possibly influence anybody. That's what I think about games, yeah? They're, they're so absurdly unrealistic in every possible respect that you couldn't possibly be influenced by that kind of stuff. It's ludicrous for the most part. Unfortunately, as you might imagine, it all comes down to the very same problem that we've had for a very long time. When a new form of media pops up, it is instantly blamed for everything. The reason books are not blamed for this stuff, even though there are some rather disturbing statistics from the Secret Service that indicate that the entertainment most enjoyed by the people that commit school massacres is in fact written, books have been around for a while, so they can't really be blamed for anything. One way or the other, perhaps we just shouldn't be blaming media at all in any form for this kind of thing, and we should be looking towards the root causes of the problems rather than scapegoating them on a piece of fantasy entertainment. More Australian-related news. God, that is a country of misery, it would appear, when it comes to gaming. Whatever the case, perhaps this is a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel here. An IT pricing inquiry done by the House of Representatives Infrastructure and Communications Committee, which quite frankly could maybe do with a little bit of better branding, has come up with the idea that we already knew that this so-called Australia tax, which seems to cause some games to cost anywhere between 40 to 90% more in Australia, Australia is quite frankly unjustified, especially when it comes to digital games. That really shouldn't surprise anybody, honestly. This is confirmation of what we already knew. They pointed out some rather interesting facts, including that it would appear to be cheaper in most instances for Australians to ship a copy from the UK 15,000 kilometers to Australia than actually buy it in Australia which is absurd to say the least. Although they also pointed out some legitimate reasons for physical good price increases, including the fact that tax is included in the price in Australia, whereas it is not in the US, and the concentration of population in the country makes distribution more expensive and more difficult. However, <laughs> This does not explain digital costs. Now, some people have tried to explain away the idea saying, well, the minimum wage in that country is higher, so it's okay that the game prices are higher. Well, as nice of an argument as that is, I'm afraid that it is a tad selfish. It lacks an awful lot of empathy. This report very clearly indicates that it's not justifiable based on the minimum wage. It's really weird when we refer to tier one and tier two countries, and it seems like Australia is actually treated as tier zero, subsidizing everybody else, which is a, a really strange idea considering they don't have enough population to do that. But this entire discussion is nowhere near as simple as it initially appears. One could just say, it should be cheaper in Australia. Yep, great, okay, sounds like a good argument. But really, the issue is that you can buy pretty much any software digitally these days and yet they have put artificial barriers in place to make sure that certain regions are either cheaper or more expensive than other regions. That's the issue right now and honestly it's been in response to piracy for the most part and this is why games in certain territories are significantly cheaper because they would rather sell it significantly cheaper than not sell it at all. The problem then becomes that other people want in on that action even though their region isn't like that, it's harder to region lock games and 
honestly, you shouldn't necessarily be doing it anyway, because that can cause a whole bunch of different problems associated with that, such as region locking on consoles, which is not really all that beneficial to anybody. And yeah, I think you can see where this is going. This is actually a hell of a lot tougher an issue than you might think. And it seems like, yes, the prices in Australia should be going down. But I think the bigger issue at hand here is how do we handle regional pricing on the internet where there are no oceans? You can't justify the distribution thing, so you've got to justify it economically. And yet, it's very difficult to stop people that want access to cheaper versions from actually getting them in the first place. You've basically got to bind games to accounts in a way more strict fashion than you currently do. You could do a lot with the idea of requiring a billing address in that country. The problem at that point is that it doesn't stop a bunch of key sellers from buying the keys en masse and then selling them to you that way. So you need to restrict games more and more and that's not necessarily beneficial to the consumer in the long run. Those kind of restrictions are not ideal. So it's a tricky argument. If it was easy, it would have been solved by now. All right, let's have a look at some of the releases that are coming up this week. The summer drought continues, I'm afraid. There aren't really all that many games to talk about that are particularly interesting, but we'll have a look at what's coming up regardless. Yesterday, we saw the release of Castle Storm on PC. This is a port of the 360 version. It is a game about attacking your opponent's castle. It's actually quite similar to a lot of the older Flash games that involved a similar concept where you controlled a baluster and you were able to fire at incoming troops and spawn your own troops and things like that but it's got an awful lot more in it it's like they threw everything and the kitchen sink into the idea you have different kinds of projectiles you have a much more complex castle with individual rooms that can be disabled a lot more physics based stuff going on there you can spawn a hero in the middle of the map that you can directly control brawler style you can upgrade your troops and so on and so forth so it's pretty interesting. I've played a little bit of it. It seems like the multiplayer is the way to go with that game, whereas the single player is just a very, very lengthy tutorial with a bunch of different objectives. You know the kind of style I mean there, where it's just gradually introducing you to stuff and then you go and play the multiplayer and you've suddenly got access to all of that. But it seems like a little bit of fun, especially for the price tag. Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly coming out for PlayStation 3 today. That's on PS2 Classics. That is a survival horror game. We've also got Pixel Junk Monsters Ultimate HD, which is coming to the PlayStation Vita. Pretty much all the Pixel Junk games are very, very interesting. This one contains the expansion pack as well as a bunch of extra stuff from the PSP Deluxe Edition. So that looks pretty good. It's for the most part a tower defense game. Cloud Free Kingdom, PlayStation 3, Wii U, Xbox, and PC on July the 30th, which is today. That is a procedurally generated torture platformer. Go check out my WTF is on that title if you want to know what that's all about. Narco Terror for PlayStation 3. It's a twin stick shooter that is inspired by a bunch of cheesy 80s action movies. There's not much more to say about this game based on the footage that's out. It looks super generic in pretty much every respect, so that's probably not all that exciting for you. What else do we have? We've got The Last Bounty Hunter for PlayStation 3 coming out on July the 30th. This is a light gun game from American Laser Games. Yes, the classic guys behind Mad Dog McCree. Very strange that this is coming out on PlayStation 3. It was originally out on 3DO and Philips CDI, if you can actually believe that. It's also available on the Wii, if I recall correctly, as a boxed version, which actually came in the Mad Dog McCree Gunslinger pack. Ah, I have a certain amount of nostalgia for those games, but I have no intention of actually playing them. I'll probably end up being highly disappointed. Nicolo no Puzzle 5 Slitherlink. This is a standalone version of Nicolo no Sudoku 5 Shigyoku no 12 Puzzle. I just, no, no, just stop, please. Samurai Warriors 2 Extreme Legends, that's a PlayStation 2 Classic, that's going to be out on PS3 today as well as Pacific Theater of Operations 4. Now, the big release on PC this week, I think, is going to be Rise of the Triad, which is coming out on July the 31st. This is a classic title, but it's been reimagined by Interceptor Games. They've come up with a whole new Rise of the Triad, and it's pretty exciting for those of us that like the old school style of shooter, which includes many weapons, nonsense, 
no story whatsoever as well as a bunch of secret areas and interesting level design so we will be seeing what comes of that and that's going to be hitting steam for the price of 15 dollars available on july the 31st i'll be bringing you a video once the embargo lifts on that day all right folks that wraps me up thank you very much for watching the content patch before i go i'd like to bring you the oc remix track of the day if you don't mind there aren't that many mech warrior remixes but there is one that i like quite a bit it's by a remixer called uh, isombra and it is called mech warrior 2 wow wow training exercises for some reason it's a fairly old remix it's actually 11 years old now but it is a rather nostalgia inducing track as far as i'm concerned and it's nicely put together maybe overdoing it slightly on the game samples in the intro but otherwise pretty damn enjoyable so check it out folks mech warrior 2 training exercises by la sombra i'll see you next time
shutting down.